Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's a Huawei base station transmitter section. So this is not a complete base station, but I guess this is only the transmitter section. So it's a DD800. It is uh, actually quite heavy. I'm not able to lift this by one hand. The back side is one big heat sink. And I guess you need to unscrew it from, from this side. One of my friends just opened it before he packed it and gave it to me. So now I'm going to try and open it. Let's take it from this side first. What is inside this thing? Okay, finally, I guess we are in. So this is how you get in. All right, so this is the entire base station. Ha ha, amazing. So we got... I really like the shielding. Maybe you can't see this, but on top of each little room, it is close with a little rubber gasket see you can even take this off hey let's try and measure the resistance in some of this right that could be interesting Aha! It is conductive and really well conductive. Amazing! So this is how they do this. Very good shielding. So that everything is, is working. Wow, let's have a close look at all this. See how well this is done. Thermal. Oh, it feels really, really funny when you touch this. It feels like it's ice cold. Because this is the whole unit was outside, so it's quite cold. So when you touch something that is really, really good conductive, oh, it feels really, really cold. That is funny. I think I'm going to save some of these because they're really, really nice. We're going to look a little bit more into the different units here. What they're doing. But also let's look at the power amplifier. Some drivers, we got some pre drivers, some 90 angle phase shifting. Wow, look at that! It is really, really beautiful. And this is the output isolation. So this puppy is doing output isolation in here. We have forward and reverse measurement of uh, the power or the load. So it will 
shut down if there's not uh, the correct load. And you can also see how it's combining the two outputs. Maybe we should try and boot this up and feed it some some power. That could be quite funny because I'm looking for some pre drivers and some. Uh -huh. That could be interesting. It is looking a little bit the same here. So this is the input. What have we got here? Ooh, that will be DC filtering, power supply. Maybe switch. Well, maybe this is a switch mode power supply. So here we've got some FETs. That's really nice. So also another power supply over here. All the switch mode power supplies. Most likely some FETs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Primary and secondary side FETs. Input power. Input protection. Oh, this is falling apart, damn it. This will only be over voltage or reverse voltage protection, some filtering. And I guess this will be 28 volts. Like the normal. Why is this? So they, they get hot there. This is the optical interfaces. All right, so this was the fast opening of one side. I will swap this and have a look at the other side. So before I dig in, let's see the power amplifiers and the largest heat sink is of course on the back here because this will get hot. So all this input stuff, that will be the filters. So let's see how we get in there. I removed all the screws from this side, so I'm guessing it's not coming apart. So I need to find some more screws. They will be here somewhere. Oh bugger, yeah, I knew somebody was in here before me. So this is how you disassemble the filter. It is directly coupled into the resonators inside the filter. And they, they made a nice little flexible, yeah, you see, this PCB is flexible. So it will be able to handle a thermal expansion of the whole filter. And obviously the, the previous dudes who went in here before me, they didn't see this, so they broke this. Uh, of course it doesn't matter because I'm not going to run with this anyway. But So you need to be careful when you disassemble stuff, not to break stuff. It's the same here. So they didn't, so oh, those are the other inputs, see? So they did actually see these. And they will be here, here and here as well. So this will be the receiver side, or DC feed point. So this is called a current inductor or injector. Done with some protection diodes for lightning protection. And this will be the receiver side. Going straight into um, a mixer with the uh, yeah, VGA and uh, gain and front end and everything. Yeah, yeah, and some filters here for uh, local oscillation uh, filtering and all that. So that's most likely what you see here. All right, so I need to take all this apart then. We can uh, get into the filter. Here is a nice detail. See, side lid LEDs, 
this is just optical interface but the real LEDs there is MD <laughs> pretty nice it's really well made let's have a look there's something here what is that a little rubber thingy <laughs> that's funny Okay, we need to desolder all these joints before we can pull this up. But maybe the filter is coming. Yeah! The filter is coming apart. Okay, now I'll swap this around. stop and we're in oh we're not really in we're only halfway in wow that is really sexy look at that wow that is nice i haven't seen that before look at that completely shielded and again so this is definitely receiver there will be a lot of access points for different frequencies Ooh, look at that a lot of very very close located resonators and some big ones oh we need to get in here and have a look at that this is interesting well, I need to go and get some tools for this because there will be 40 screws. <laughs> oh man, what to look at first? Yeah, let's go and have a look at the filter. Oh, it even says RXB, RXA. So this is TX. That is TX. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, because that is the closest to the power amplifier, so, okay, great. It even says exactly what it is. What is that, then? I don't know. Antenna something. Yeah, we need to go in here and have a look. And they secured the adjustment screws with some glue and then they filed them all down so it can be assembled this is a very very complicated manufacturing process that is very very expensive and you can't retrim or adjust every anything oh my I'm guessing they're not too happy about this All right, let's go and get a machine. Oh my god, that was a little bit difficult. There was actually two small ones here. I thought well, they would be for a little bridge or a, a coupling or, or you know cross coupling or something like that. Uh, they're normally using different kind of screws. And then of course they had these EMC gaskets or like high frequency close uh, connections here, like really really good. And again some shields. This will be for the DC feed points. There's even a little capacitive trimmer in here. Wow. So they can balance everything out for maximum isolation. Oh, we gotta see this. This was really, really nice. This is nicely, nicely made. And look at this. So 
really well done i must say all these screws for the lid they're hidden down here i'm really uh, impressed by the design oh they found out they needed a little bit more height or a little bit more space here Oh, it's because this one is really, really high. Sometimes when they de when they solder this, it can actually be a little bit higher or lower. So they need a little bit more clearance. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. So it must be the same here. No? This one got clearance. Oh, that's funny. Okay, but I guess we are in. Are we going to have a look? Again, look at all the adjustments. Ah, oh, yeah, it's actually possible to see this. See, see the small ones go inside the middle and adjust the frequency of that resonator, but the screw in between the two resonators, you can imagine. The long screws here they go in between the resonators so this is how you open or close the couplings between the, the different resonators so you can get exactly the coupling you want and look another nice nice detail those you really don't see that much this is a stepped impedance low pass filter it is really really nice it's packed into a little bit of Teflon. Really, really nice. So you see, the different impedances comes with the, the diameter of the RF track, if you want to call it that. And the, the length is, of course, the capacity and the impedance is the diameter and all that. It's it's really, really nicely made. Look up stepped impedance uh, coaxial uh, filters. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to say about this. This looks a little bit like all the others we fit it to. Could also just have a look. I need to find the right one. Hang on. Oh, damn it. I knew this. Oh, damn it. That is some. We need a machine to do that. Yep. And now look at that detail. Of course, the screws. How do I show this? The screws are silvered. Just like everything else here. Yes, silvered because you cannot combine materials inside a filter like, like this. Because if you combine any kinds of different materials, you will have intermodulation problems immediately. So everything must be the same. So this is why you see silver screws. I better save these for something sexy. <laughs> Great. I'm sorry, we were not done with this filter. You gotta see this again. Look at the signal signal path. That big massive one. So those three they are also coupled at the bottom i guess there's a feeder or something yeah 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 you see that down here but then see there's a path this way there is a, a cross coupling here it's 
not that easy to see. It's a variable capacity here. So they tune these for the correct cup. But there's also a way here. So by magic, all the different faces, they line up. So you get a very, very steep, you know, um, suck in frequency to the between the receiver and the transmitter sides. So this is really, really nice. And again, they do this. And note here, this coupling here goes down here. I don't know if it's possible to see this. But this one will go into that hole. Right? And some of the field will couple to this and couple to that one again. And you can adjust this a little bit with a screwdriver. If you just take a screwdriver here, oops, and then you bend it. Stick in this. Oh, come on, god damn it. Put in the screwdriver. Oh, this is the big one. But normally you can stick in a screwdriver. And then you can bend it. Yeah, okay, it's easy to see this now. And then you can find trim cross coupling. Really, really cute. And again, you'll notice this flat side is parallel with the top, creating a capacitor. And here we need more. We need them to be bigger, but they want this to be flat. So this is why they go up and around and fold them. So they can actually be bigger, but small, smaller in height, right? Bigger surface. And also note how they're made here. So there's a ring on the edge around the thread. So when you mount this, it's going to be straight and stable. If you just mounted on something flat like this, there will always be a little bit bendy, bendy edge or something here that's not perfectly flat. This is the way to do it. Let's look a little bit on the current, current feed and lightning protection. So there's a capacitor here where the RF signal goes through and then there's an inductor that disconnects the RF and the TVS, resistors, inductor and another capacitor, you know, two capacitors yeah, to ground and then another inductor and then a gas discharge to ground and here is our DC feed. So they're doing all they can for good protection and good isolation. All right, we just got to get in here and have a look as well. Look at that. Another inductor. And what is that? That is interesting. So there's both. I know what that is. Ha <laughs> ha! I haven't seen that one before. Look at that. See? And then an inductor, right? But what if you have a capacitor here as well? And you can trim the capacitor on this one to that one, together with that one. Then what happens? You have a parallel resonance and it becomes perfectly open. Then this inductor just disappears. 
<laughs> that is really nice. And this is exactly why they will have trimmer capacitors here on this piece. That is to tune this. Oh, this is really, really sexy made. I just found out something more I need to share with you guys. Look at the screws down here. They're all steel screws. But this one is connected to the transmitter side. So that this one share the transmitter side, right? So that is a silver screw. And then antenna port is also somehow connected to transmitter side, whatever. So that's also a silver screw. And it's the same all the way here in the receiver side. Those are steel screws. Anything else here in the transmitter side that is made with the silvered screws. So this just reveal they will do this for low intermodulation. And they why are they not using the silver screws everywhere? Because they're very, very expensive. So to save cost, they use steel screws where they can and steel screws where they can look at the difference steel versus silver i gotta weigh these because and i need to figure out what is inside this one are they made of copper and then silver it's really interesting Oh, also I forgot to say, the cross couplings in between here, they are also called the dog bone, you can see why. And the length of them is very, very important. And it's different from this one to that one, because it's just a different part of the filter. So, they're really, really interesting. See, this one is made completely different. That is funny. But of course, there's also inductance in this. So maybe that is. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is making a new resonance between this and that one. So that makes a little bit more sense. All right, and see here. That is a little bit interesting too. And this is, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the electronics inside this really nice base station. So, Let's start with the with a brief overview. I actually did power it up. As you can see, it is alive. Maybe I should turn it off <laughs> so I don't get electrocuted. So this is a 48 volts. It goes through this protection circuit. It's actually two N fets here and two N fets here, and they are all the sources together, and then the minus input goes through this those two drains, source to source, and then drain out again. So those are all driven by 12 volts by two different systems that drive this one and this drives that one. So this will uh, uh, turn off the input in case of wrong polarity. So this is really nice. I didn't find any uh, other um, disconnect or uh, current measurements or anything like that. So it's, I guess it's just that it uh, is only polarity uh, protection. I was also hoping for an overcurrent uh, protection uh, or like an active fuse because I don't see any fuses in here. So then the 48 volts goes in via a common mode filter and then via all this, and again an inductor, and now we are inside the first shield, well, the, the second shield. So, 
here we have current sense and this is in the ground on the minus input goes via two five milliohm resistors in parallel note the sense wires i don't really understand this capacitor because a capacitor parallel with 2.5 milliohm what kind of thing is this capacitor <laughs> going to be used for really this impedance it will be too low so then you have some resistance and then this capacitor will have an effect okie dokie i understand now there's an op amp or current sense amplifier and then it goes to the to the system okay okay so the 48 volts uh, input goes to this uh, transformator via a full bridge um, full bridge push pull converter and you will have the two uh, driver fed drivers this is a fed driver for those two and this is a fed driver for those two and it's all controlled via this one so this is the switch, mo switch mode controller and it's actually driving the primary side via this is an isolation barrier and this is the capacitor between input and output grounds and then yeah we have the isolation so the drive to the primary side goes through here and then on the secondary side we have a synchronous rectifier again a full bridge gate driver gate driver and this is again controlled by the same chip so what is really interesting about this uh, converter is it's really really low loss but there's also another really really fancy thing this half of this con uh, converter uh, controller chip is, is controlling this one in spread spectrum mode while the next ones they are running in normal PWM mode I will show you this in a second so the center frequency of, of this one is uh, I think it was uh, between two and three hundred uh, kilohertz and it is um, non-regulated 48 to 48 and then everything here uh, after the isolation is uh, just a uh, ground to the chassis as normal so if you put in 47 in or 46 whatever this is what you get out here on this bus and now it goes to the two 28 volt uh, converters of of course it's 28 volts because this is the high voltage uh, for um, for power amplifiers uh, for telecom equipment, it's always uh, 28 volts for for LD MOS uh, power amplifiers. So and and uh, this one is running 300 kilohertz, and it is of course in phase with the other 28 um, volt converter. So we have two of them. And again, it is done. This one is uh, a step down. Look at this really really nice three feds so two in the push and this end is in the pull or this is to the ground and this is uh, the 48 volt and then it goes via this inductor and then here is a uh, something a little bit different now we have the high side current measurement and again they made it really really nice with the two thin wires from the center of the resistors and then it goes via resistors to a high side current amplifier so that is really nice and then all this uh, is the output filter and this is the 28 volt for the power amplifiers and again the other one is done exactly the same way see similar circuit and again 28 volt okay so this uh, 28 volt bus go via a diode inductor and now we have another little filter here and again the same almost the same circuit uh, again a step down via another inductor so yeah I'm the, I wrote the frequency on this so it's 187 kilohertz 
and now this one is generating 5.5 volts. The 5.5 volt is the, is the long range distribution of power and then you will have local regulators for stuff uh, that needs power locally. For example, we have these three step down converters for the FPGA uh, section. And then here for, for the, I guess this is the main CPU or, or the main uh, encoding decoding uh, chip. This is running really, really hot. So I guess this draw a lot of power and it's, it's running at 0 0.9 volts. All these uh, capacitors around this chip is 0 0.9 volts. And this is the converter that is uh, making 0 0.9 volts. It's controlled by this one. Other than that, uh, the rest is just uh, the normal um, oscillators, mixers, uh, receivers, um, and all those uh, normal RF chips of not that much uh, interest. Here we have uh, the mixing um, and uh, generating of the transmit signals. So this one goes to the transmitter. And uh, yes, of course, um, I've broken all these, but the other one, I soldered them back on because I was powering this up. And of course, there's uh, 28 volts on, uh, on everything, on all the LDMOS, but there's zero volts on all the gates. And this turns out to be, this is the controller chip. So this one is, uh, contains a lot of AD and DA and it's uh, analog temperatures and voltages and monitoring of, of everything in the power amp uh, stage and it's just a serial bus to the to the main cpu so it's impossible to boot up this uh, power amplifier uh, without the right software or the right modes or anything like that so first we have an ldmos this is a five uh, watt ldmos and we're still in a single ended mode then we go uh, via an isolator and now we go into a 90 degree hybrid into the two different 10 watts uh, LD mosses. And note something here. Uh, yeah, I can do this with a little metal thing. Note the tracks here. All these extra tracks, they are here for a reason. I think it's actually easier to, ex to show here it's it's a lot easier to see what the idea behind all this is actually see if they wanted to make this track longer to delay the signal a little bit more so that this signal would be in phase with the other one so they need to be in correct timing so what you do is you cut this track here and add a little solder and then cut it here and now you're back and now the track is a little bit longer. And because they made it like this, you can have all the different combinations, depending on where you cut, you can make the track longer. So you'll add delay. And of course here you can cut again and add a little bit more delay. So that's the, the gate sides, that's the input. So this is the drain, this is the output. And here you will see again, you can cut and make it longer. Signal goes here. You can cut and make it longer. Really nice. But there's a one. There's actually a place I found where you can make it shorter. So this is the other one. So this is also a 50 ohm track coming from each side. They need to be at the exact right timing for this to work. See here, you can cut and make this one shorter. Or you can make it longer again if you want to. So now, see, double width because you're combining these two signals. So now you're in 25 ohm track. And the length of the 25 ohm track is matched for the exact frequency range this amplifier is working. And now they go to 50 ohms again and we are out. So here you have the coupler where you measure the output power and this pad is connected 
to an, a little attenuator here, and it goes out. And of course you also have the power going through this circulator, and then power goes out. And if there is a mismatch, or the antenna has fallen off, then all the power will just go straight to the load, instead of out. Well, this is what they can do. Really fantastic. Well, let's look at the... Let's try and power this up and have a look at this uh, this spread spectrum, because I thought this was really, really interesting. I think I measured it. See, there's a test point right here. And this is how it looks. Fantastic, isn't it? Let's crank this down a little bit, like this. So we can see this a little bit better. Isn't that just fantastic? That is really, really wide band spread spectrum. <laughs> and if you look at the other converters, it's just nice and stable. Maybe I can show this. This is just a normal PWM signal. And look at this. Look how crazy it looks. How much it's really changing its frequency from time to time. This is how you solve all sorts of EMC problems. Because now, now when you measure all the noise that this is uh, conducting out of this unit, there is no um, powerful spike. It's just a wide but, uh, but low <laughs> spike. Really, really fantastic. Also, I tried to measure a little bit here on the, on the digital signals. So this is an RS. 232, I guess. And I measured some funny communications. And I, I don't know exactly uh, what the, the, the different chips here are doing, I must uh, admit. But I can just tell, tell that the, this got to be the main brain of it all, because this is running the most uh, the hot. Of course, this is the flash where you contain uh, uh, the programming for all those chips. SD RAM, some IO expansion, but and I guess FPGAs is connected directly to the two optical interfaces for faster uh, Ethernet. So this is how you get online and share your uh, mobile data. So of course via the the fiber interfaces. I forgot to mention a little bit. Uh, more about uh, this uh, power supply. The two um, 26 volts uh, power supplies, the outputs of the two power supplies is um, driving each power amplifier separately. So that means this power um, supply is driving this power amplifier. And it goes this way. And then the 26 or uh, 28 volts then goes to this double diode. And then the 5.5 volts is odd together with the two different 28 volts uh, supplies. So that means if one of the power amplifiers blows up or short circuits, this power supply will just shut down and the other one will continue to work on the other power amplifier and will still be able to deliver power to the rest of the systems. So this is why they've uh, done it this way. Pretty smart. And another thing that I found out, of course, look at this um, power supply board, uh, the power amplifier board again. 
Look at all the VS, how big they are. Of course, this is uh, for low inductance at uh, higher frequencies. But what you can actually do if, if you look carefully through some of them here, you can see that there are milled tracks into the bottom plate, the aluminium this uh, PCB is actually soldered to. So it is a two-layer PCB. And the bottom tracks goes through here. Note, there's a milled track. So there's no short circuit, short circuit on the on the back, and it, the track goes here. And also the power supply go under here to here, and you can see through the holes. It is maybe not visible on the video, but the power goes here. And of course you can't have tracks cutting the RF tracks. So you can't have DC or signal tracks or anything at all on the bottom side crossing any RF tracks. So how they done that? See DC goes into one fed and then DC goes to the other fed. And to make it symmetric, they just put the other half of the decoupling capacitors on the other side here, just to make it completely symmetric in the design. And then DC goes here. So this one, and again, they're doing the same thing. So for the gate signals, see here, and the signal goes under here. This is the only possibility to cross an RF track via those parts, because the bottom here is metal. So that means this is the only way. And then the track goes here and back to all these, you'll have the tracks. Again, here you can see it. Here's the path under this one. Again, the back side is metal, and then they are up to this area with the drive signals. So this is really, really smart engineered. A two-layer PCB. Isn't that just fantastic? Of course, I'm going to try and figure out how many layers this one is. So I will take it out and I need to cut a little piece of one of the corners so I can figure out how many layers they've used. So I'll get back. And here is the back side of the main PCB. See, they even had to put in a few components on the back side. This is, this is really, really beautiful made. And this is the main transformator, the 4848. This is for better heat sinking, just to transfer all the heat from the ferrite and down to the base plate. They even put in some some paint extra here to add more isolation. And see, this is where it goes for isolation and for for heat transfer. And look at all the the rooms for all the different components and complete shielding. Really, really well done. If we lift up the hot components, this is heat transfer compound. Let's try and, oh, this is a little bit difficult. Yeah, now it's loose. Oh, come on. Look, this massive. And 
they really put this layer on super super nice a very very thin layer just done perfect maybe you sh maybe we should try and and see how easy it is to solder on this material So let's try and see if we can solder on it. <laughs> Most likely not. I'm not able to heat it up. Not even with a mid-cal. No. This is not going to happen. Yeah, you need to preheat the entire thing before you can solder on it. But it was worth a funny try. It is just not going to happen. So here's what I've done. I cut a tiny piece of the corner like this. And after cutting, I sanded it a little bit. Let's see if we can get a sharp picture on the video. I think it's going to be pretty hard to take a video of this. Otherwise, I will try and put in a few pictures. Okay, I've put in on an extra lens. Oh yeah, I can get a video of this. Have a look. Eight layers.